Welcome back, everyone, to Nanalyze the Don. Our main host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury, and we have another match, another longer match between Dying Friend and Dr. Doom on Adansonia. Dying Friend going for Hovercraft Factory, which we don't see very often, and Dr. Doom going for the Colcubot Factory, which we see all the time. So, Dr. Doom, not as experienced a player as Dying Friend. Curious how that's going to pan out here. I mean, this is a longer game, so clearly they managed to find something that made it work, but Dying Friend is. A bit of a tough opponent, so I'm curious how this can actually pan out. Dr. Doom immediately going for quite a bit of raiding with the Glaives, or at least scouting, only three Glaives, and kind of spread a little bit. In fact, okay, they're going to the main base. I'm a bit surprised they aren't, one of them isn't going over here just to see if there's anything over in the northeast side of the map, because it's possible their opponent started there. I mean, it's unlikely, but it is possible. Also, it's good to have workers, or not workers, good to have raiders just set up so that if your opponent's engineers come in, you can stop them. We saw in the first game today on Fairyland that it's actually really effective to do that to stop your opponents from expanding quickly. But that was not done, and in fact, the Glaives didn't even manage to find Dynfroin's base before being completely destroyed by the daggers. So, yeah, that didn't work out so well. Dr. Doom going for... really, going for very early size. While also building up a couple... well, building up a couple metal extractors over the western side of the map, I'm... Not sure why this is being done this way, but okay, that's what's being done. So Dr. Doom going for apparently a bit of a backyard scouting mission. I don't expect they're going to be going for raiding. They're only going with one of the sides, so I figure, you know, just go around the back, stay cloaked, see what your opponent's up to, avoid the trees, because that'll give it away, and then keep an eye on them. Mind you, normally for that sort of thing, you use a gremlin, you don't use a scythe. Oh, I see, no, no, the scythe is being used to scout out the northeast side of the map. Okay, that makes sense. That makes more sense. Same time as Dr. Doom sets up the southwest side of the map, the essentially the mirror of that. To find what they can find. And does Time Friend... Time Friend has no idea. No, neither player really has a radar presence. Yeah, they're both pretty much playing in the dark right now. So, Dimefreund does not see these glaives coming in, losing a couple metal extractors to that. And the commander's going to try to help out, but uh, good micro from, Di from Dr. Doom getting away from the, where Dimefreund's commander is going. Should be able to get rid of the dagger as well, and... Oh, one of the glaives even survives. Maybe. One of the glaives maybe survives. Well, no, one of the glaives goes back in because apparently surviving is not something it wants to do. It's quite happy to die. Although it does manage to get rid of yet another metal extractor, so Dianfrain's economy right now is not doing so hot, whereas Dr. Doom doing a fine job expanding while also making sure that their opponents cannot really expand efficiently. In fact, this scythe is going to be perfectly placed to stop the quill from moving forward and expanding, so that's going to be perfect. Like, on top of the damage that's been dealt already. <laughs> I mean, Dianfrain, I don't think they've managed to destroy a single metal extractor, while at the same time, this quill is dead. And there it goes, the quill down, not even able to expand, so Dimethrin now has to set up another quill, or send another quill over to the southeast side of the map, and rebuild the metal extractors they already built up over here, while at the same time Dr. Doom has been doing a very good job getting their own economy set up. So, really good rating off of Dr. Doom right at the start of the match. Again, I don't, I think Dr. Doom might be feeling a little bit of pressure to make sure that Dimethrin can't really build up, because... Dimethrin, being the more experienced player, is probably going to be better off in the macro game than Dr. Doom. Mind you, I haven't seen a lot of Dr. Doom's late game play, so it's possible that they're fine. But, typical strategy, if you know your opponent's probably better than you, or at least more experienced, try to keep it from going into the late game. Now, minor spoiler, this is going to go into the late game. I mean, it's a 40 some odd minute game, like the last one. So, it will go into the late game. Just, maybe not as fast. And Scythe getting a bit of damage in there. Getting yet another metal extractor. Of course, it's kind of screwed. Don't go to the forest! Oh, what? Oh. Never mind. Okay, those trees don't get knocked over. Go to the forest. That works. I mean, Dimefront's still going to spot it out, but... Well, Dr. Doom, are you paying attention to your... No, you're not paying attention to your Scythe. Okay. That's cool. That's uh, a tough thing to remember to do sometimes. Pay attention to all your units. Like... Yeah, Zero K is a game that streamlines a lot of the micromanagement of RTS, but it doesn't eliminate it. Not in the slightest. It, it's certainly a game where micromanagement plays a part, and paying attention to units plays a part, especially units like Scythes. You gotta be careful with those. 
Still though, Doctor Doom should be able to harass out. Actually, Dime Frame, what's your commander at? Not upgraded. The commander will probably jump into the water once the glaives get to it, but that leaves everything here open. The lotuses aren't enough to stop eight glaives from destroying this entire base. There's really not much else either. So right now, Dime Frame is honestly playing off the back foot. Now this lotus being set up is a minor problem, but Dime Frame's commander, nope, it's jumping into the sea. It's jumping. It's failing to jump into the sea. Oh, it just barely jumped into the sea. Okay. It's in the sea. But again, these glaives. Actually, four glaives, not enough. Nope. The glaives should retreat. Why are these glaives not retreating? Nope. These glaives are dead. Those glaives are totally dead. They will not accomplish anything. The lotuses will kill them all. And the daggers. But it pushed the commander into the sea, which I guess is good. I really don't think so. I mean, the commander being in the sea means this takes a little longer to rebuild, but yeah, I almost would have liked to see them just push past the commander. They, I mean, eight glaives, I guess they surrounded the commander, got closer to the water. It could have made it harder for the commander to jump into the sea. But yeah, they, they jump into the sea. That's what commanders do when you threaten them. That being said, despite all that, I mean, despite the fact that Dying commander survived, they're still way behind economically. Doctor Doom is doing great two-to-one metal advantage has pretty solid base as well. Like, it's going to be difficult to raid. At this point, Dying Friend's going to have to go for all-out assaults in order to deal any meaningful damage. This one Conjurer is having a bit of a hard time. It's actually going to die. There's nothing that'll save it, even the side. It's not even going for it. The Conjurer is going to die. Pro tip, if your Conjurer is likely to die because something is coming up that'll probably kill it, just walk. The Conjurer will cloak up quickly enough. If your opponents don't try to look for it, and they probably will, but if you're careful enough with it, you can keep your opponents from finding it. And at that point... Yeah, they're good. At this point, the southwest side of the map is taking a fair bit of damage. The Lotus will go down, but taking two more darth or daggers with it, so the area further southwest is perfectly safe. Dying Freund still going for Mass Dagger, and I'm honestly kind of surprised at this point they haven't switched off to Mace. Or to Scalpel. Still going for the Mass Dagger, and this is where it'll definitely end. There's nothing Mass Dagger can do anymore with the forces having been built up. And Zayas coming in. Dying Commander's dead. Dying Friends Commander is going to die. Oh, no, it's not going to die. It's going to jump into the sea. No! Just get the commander. No, the commander does not jump into the sea. Okay. And one of the sides survives long enough to be killed by the Lotus, too. But the Lotus was in the sea. That was a good place to put a Lotus. Dying Friends taking advantage of that time, however, to expand a little bit. Not, pretty, not that strong in their energy economy. Pretty good for metal, though. But having lost their commander, they lost all the storage and a fair bit of their energy and income as well. Like six energy per second, on top of four metal per second. Bit of a blow, like three solar plants, that will make up for it, but we aren't seeing any solar plants being built up. And actually, how many workers are on Dimefriend's side right now? Two. Three. There's three workers. There's three workers for Dimefriend. And there's the mace. I was thinking more scalpel than mace, though. Although... Although, at this point, Dr. Doom's forces aren't really lined up in a way to actually get rid of the mace efficiently, so there is the possibility of the mace actually pushing through. Got rid of both reavers, so the daggers can walk in. Like, Dr. Doom... No! Pull back! Pull back! So, Dr. Doom, if you're watching this, be sure to pay attention to your units. It's very important. Micro is a part of this game, despite the fact that the game streamlines a lot of stuff. Micro is a major part of this game, especially if you're playing Cloakie or Jump Bots. Or hovers, it seems, for that matter. But yeah, paying attention to your units is important. Fire and Forget doesn't work. The time to kill is way too low in this game for that to happen. Well, time to kill compared to time to build. Still, though, Doctor Doom, they are ahead economically, and they're not accessing metal or anything, so they're doing okay. It's just that, again, it's just a matter of making sure that you actually have all this stuff being used. Not to mention, they could use more power infrastructure... I mean, on a map like this, one thing that's really important to bear in mind is that tidal generators are really useful. Because I think the wind generators deal, or generate, like, two, yeah, 0.2 at the highest. Well, 0.5 at the highest. But 1.2 in the water. So put them in the water. I mean, yeah, Hovercraft Factory is a bit of a problem for that, but it's not too bad. The Glaive's over in the north, managing to deal a bit of damage. Get rid of the defenses, but there's no follow-up force to really make that matter. There is this set of glaives that could be a follow-up force, and indeed it looks like Doctor Doom is planning to use that in exactly that purpose. And that should work out fine. There's not really much in the way of defenses to actually stop that. So Dimefriend is really open right now. 
They are, however, getting up their own title generators and managing to deal a lot of economy, er, economic growth because of that. So that means they're no longer going to be excessing. They're not going to be behind as much economically. Where Doctor Doom right now, they are starting to fall behind due to lack of power infrastructure. I don't know why they're going for the pylons. There's not enough energy right now for Doctor Doom to get all their construction done, let alone get overdrive done. I don't understand what they're thinking. Now, ah, I see. Well, I guess they're banking on the wind generators picking up, and they have now finally done so, so Doctor Doom can actually use that a little bit. But still, no, that's not how it works. Like, you gotta get the power infrastructure first, and then you can go from there. Still, though, managing to get enough rating that it may not matter, Dime Friend staying at about half of Doctor Doom's economy. While at the same time getting up a proxy tank factory, so I'm guessing we're gonna see some emissaries be used to wipe out a lot of the stuff at the front. Probably Emissary Mace may... Like, I don't know. Emissaries have been really used as as skirmishers in this patch. Remember, this is 1690, so this isn't quite the latest version where Emissaries got nerfed and I think have to stop before firing. At this point, though, it may not even matter. The Glaives coming in here, not really being spread out. Like, I don't see Doctor Doom doing a lot of line moving. They're doing some, but when you're dealing with daggers, la daggers have line splash. You kind of want to spread your units out so they're not in a line. And that's not what's being done here. At all. So I'm not really sure what... I, I'm not sure what would happen if those glaives had been properly spread out. Probably would have been able to go back and kill the daggers, actually. They, those 30 some odd glaives, they could have wiped out all those daggers, no problem. Still did a number on the economy, but... Yeah, Dime Friend should be able to recover from that, no problem. The Quill is alive. There's enough daggers to defend against any follow-up forces. And while the front line is getting assaulted pretty hard, we're also in Kodachis, never mind. Seems some light raiders to go along with the maces. Well, light riot raiders. Yeah, these these forces are going to have a bit of a hard time. That is, the the Ronin here are going to have a bit of a tough time getting through. Same time, though, more size coming in. That's clearly Dr. Doom's favorite unit. And they could actually get the quill. There's no defenses for the quill. This quill's dead. This quill's done. Front lines at the same time. Having a bit of a hard time because of all the Kodachis, but the Rebus should be able to get rid of them. Size, however, not being paid attention to. Again, they weren't queued up with orders to actually get rid of this stuff. So, not really able to wipe anything out. Uh, attention being paid back to them, but still, it's a little bit late. I mean, there was a chance to wipe out everything and decides to get away afterwards. That chance is kind of over. I, no, that chance is totally over. Some damage was dealt, some quills were gotten rid of, but there's so many quills nearby. I mean, I always say, go for the workers. The reason I say go for the workers is that it delays how long the rebuilding can happen. But if there's two workers nearby, it doesn't mean anything. You haven't killed the workers, there are still plenty of workers. They can get the reclaim going, get the rebuilding going of the static economy immediately afterwards. So it doesn't actually solve any problems. Still, Doctor Doom maintains a massive economic advantage. They could use a couple more caretakers or have their commander build up some stuff. Like, help assist build, I should say. That is the one thing right now they are having a bit of a problem with, is that... Is that metal... And the fact that it's accessing. But really, right now, they have enough units. They could actually walk right in here. Like, placed properly. Not the art line moving a decent amount. But, like, play pro placed properly, these units could walk in. The Stinger would wipe out one or two of them. The Mace would kill a couple. But there's still so many of them, they'd be able to just destroy this entire firebase. Especially with the Phantom support. Actually, with the Phantom support, they're totally fine. The one problem being the daggers, in fact, the Reavers are not near the daggers. The Phantoms are going to go down without any fight. One of them might be able to get a shot up before the daggers kill it, but probably not. Reaver finally getting in position, and no, not even enough. All three Phantoms go down. That was most of Doctor Doom's force there. That was their offensive power, was those Phantoms, and they're gone. Like, gotta protect those Phantoms with, raid with riot units. Super important to do that. If you don't do that, you end up losing out a lot in what you can actually deal with. And there are enough glaives, so they should be able to get rid of the, the daggers being built up, but right now, Doctor Doom's entire frontline force is gone. Mostly because those daggers got rid of the phantoms. And then the mace could come in and wipe out a bunch of the Ronin, and could actually come in without any real problem either, wipe out the Ronin. Same time, though, over the north side of the map, we do have a lot of glaives taking out Dimefront's base. Should be able to take it out of the factory, actually. Glaive going down. Arr, don't chase the glaive. Go to the factory. Just get rid of it. 
If you're gonna go for the factory, go for the factory. If you're not gonna go for the factory, go for all the metal extractors instead. Don't chase a single unit, especially if it's walking away and not defending. Like, seriously, that's not worth it. I don't know why I'm trying to give advice here. Just seeing a lot of things, like, if Dr. Doom, if you're watching, there's just so many small things that can be done. Especially at this stage of the game. Especially with glaives. Especially when we have this many glaives. Sheesh. That's a lot of units. That is a huge amount of units. On top of the Dante being built up. Oh, yeah. There's some radar. Oh, man. The YouTube comments are going to get really harsh about that. Yeah, neither player really going for the radar much. Like, just build them on the plateau. It's not hard. Like, Dime Friend, you're watching this right now. I don't... Like, you normally build radar. I don't understand. Oh, whatever. Fealthos already made that criticism during the game. So, I won't repeat it. this point, though, there are enough glaives that should be able to get rid of these daggers. Properly placed, at least. The glaives... If they're properly placed, should be able to get rid of the daggers. If they go in all at once and don't get point moved, which they are right now, because that means they're close enough the daggers can line splash them and kill them all. Which they will do. Especially if they're walking in a line like that. I don't understand why Doctor Doom isn't just like... No. Use... Use line move. That doesn't even matter. There's enough glaives that even with that... Even walking in one at a time, the glaives are still dealing a decent amount of damage. Wiping out basically everything, but... That was 30 glaives, and now there are 5. There could be, like, 15. Actually, they could have survived. Uh, I don't know. I think holding alt... That's our alt or control, or possibly both, when you're moving... I think... No, control maintains formation. Alt puts them in kind of a box formation. If you just alt right-click, or... Yeah, you'll get a box formation. Control right-click, you'll have them maintain their current formation. So if you want to have Glaze line move, we don't have to keep doing the line move operation. Just line move once, then control right click across the entire thing, or control right click without actually dragging across the entire thing, and there you go. You're good. Actually, I'm pretty sure it's control. I have to double check. But yeah, that was a lot of units Doctor Doom made that were thrown away, and now reclaim fodder. A lot of it too. The like Dime Friends economy, they're they're only having an economic advantage because of that reclaim. Although there's reclaim over to the south too, the weaver is or the welder rather is grabbing. Same time, this conjurer, well, kind of deal with the chainsaw. Try to emissaries got rid of it, so can't really be used. But hey, this Dante coming in might be able to deal some damage. Same time, the cyclops is there to stop it. So yeah, Diamond's just on top of everything here. Doctor Doom with the scorpion to follow up. Boss might come in both at once, and that could maybe do the trick. I don't know. No, that, that Cyclops is going to do fine. The Reaver's not even in position to help support it. Like, if the Reavers were up front, but again, point moving. I always, 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 always get on people who are point moving because it does not work well. Units cannot shoot through each other in 0k. That is not a thing they can do. You have to have your units positioned so that they are not blocking each other. Otherwise, they will not fire and thus will essentially just be dead weight. This is a super important part of the game. Like, it is the reason why Doctor Doom is having such a hard time, despite the fact that they've had a massive economic advantage this entire game, and despite the fact that they've been sending massive armies towards their opponent's base, and being destroyed by armies a third the size. Well, that and the fact that when you're dealing with large armies, daggers actually do a really good job dealing with them. But in this situation, the Cyclops could have been wiped out by the Reavers. The Reavers did no damage. Because the Reavers were behind the Dante and could not fire at the Cyclops. Actually, I don't even know if Doctor Doom is using control groups. I would recommend putting these units onto different control groups. I like to control group by type, but control grouping by function also makes sense. Like the forward units, defense units, maybe support units for particular other units, special units. Like the Dante on a group, but the units supporting the Dante on a group, but other units that are further forward on a group, but the units that are raiding on a group. Mind you, I also have this wonky key set that allows me to use all 10 control groups easily. Like, equally easily. So, I wouldn't necessarily recommend going for that. But still, 5 control groups is plenty for having a few units here and there. On top of the fact that factories have their own automatic hotkeys. So, yeah, Doctor Doom 
still in a reasonably strong economic position, but Dimefern has been catching up this entire game, mostly thanks to the reclaim. And that is working out fine for, Di for Dimefreund. I mean, they're just going to be able to push in. But they probably won't be able to do much. There's a lot of defenses already set up. The Dante's here, the Scorpion's here. Quite a bit of air defenses as well to help deal with it. But it's still kind of iffy because, well, Dimefreund, they haven't got that much to work with. Like, they've been doing fine attrition-wise. They've been doing nice army-wise. Army Scorpion, however, in the base, this is... Oh, man, if it deguns this set of daggers here, it will actually have a chance. It's not going to dig in the set of daggers, is it? No, it kind of got caught out, didn't it? Yeah, it kind of got caught out. Yeah, I don't think Scorpion is going to be going for that D-gun. Well, that's that. Scorpion goes down without really putting up much of a fight, unfortunately. I was about to say that Dynfern has these halberds, and the thing about the halberds is that they can push in and wipe out all these defenses. So, yeah, they can just do that now. I mean, why not? Same time, a lot of knights going over to the north side of the map should be wiped out by the halberds pretty quickly. And the knights fire reasonably quickly, though, so they should be able to... They might stand on a couple of the halberds, but... No, actually, the halberds are going to have a bit of a tough time. Dagger follow-up, however, is not going to have a tough time. That will be able to get rid of the knights without issue. Dimefriend, again, successfully defending the north side of the map and still has no radar over there at all. Really not sure why. Now, that being said, Dr. Doom has spent this entire time maintaining this territory and maintaining the static economy they have on top of the overdrive. Main issue right now is not producing enough, but they still have a fairly large army. A lot of it being Ravens, a lot of it being used to get rid of the Cyclopses. Holy crap, that's... I mean, it takes a lot to get rid of the Cyclopses. It takes, I think, 15 or so Ravens to get rid of Cyclops. 12,000 HP, 100 damage a shot, something like that. But, actually, it would take exactly 15 Ravens to get rid of the Cyclops. But, yeah, that's a lot of ravens. And now that Dimefriend knows, hey, it's raven's time, probably going to see a fair bit of anti -air coming in. Or, nope, just emissaries. Emissaries and daggers. And it's a winning combination thus far. D Dimefriend stayed in the game despite having a massive economic disadvantage. And a massive army disadvantage. They've just been able to get value. So, I guess you might as well go for it. It's working. Of course, once these... Ravens are done, which they are done. They could actually go in and take out that other Cyclops now. In fact, they really should go and take the other Cyclops. Because if they get rid of that Cyclops, that is going to make it a lot easier for the Dante to wipe everything else out. Because there's really not much here. I mean, because a couple of Ettons and another Cyclops will be coming up. But two Ettons against 16, 17 Ravens. Actually, how many Ravens are there? Tell me how many Ravens there are. There are 18 Ravens! Yeah, against 18 Ravens. That's a bit of a difference. A bit of a problem as far as the... as far as Dimefriend's concerned, but... well, that's how it goes, so at this point, Dimefriend is going to be having to deal with that. I only have a couple of Ettons to do... or three Ettons to do with. Actually, getting, I think, increasing amounts of Ettons over time. Actually, no, getting increasing amount of Swifts over time. Because Dr. Doom has not gone to get rid of the Cyclops yet. I mean, they could, but they haven't. Man, they got so many ravens. Like, that's 18 ravens. That could wipe out Diamond Friend's entire economy. Like, seriously, just go in, hit every single metal extractor, and target every single metal extractor in one pass. Some of the ravens will die, sure, but that's a lot of metal extractors. That's, like I said, Diamond Friend's entire economy. Given that the army sizes are about even, it's not a bad idea. And the Dante risking it while you're going for the Cyclops. The Cyclops is designed to destroy you. It will die, but you'll lose half the health in the process. Not to mention the fact that there's the Emissary here to make it even harder for the Dante to survive. And there's another Cyclops being built. Actually, two Cyclopses haven't been built. And Geoplant. Okay, that's dying for not saving those Halberds, but that's fine. That's enough damage. Doctor Doom being knocked back quite a bit. That advanced Geoplant was not actually in a very vulnerable spot, though. But unlike last game, we didn't see a lot broken as a result. Oh, yes, Dimefriend could have actually saved three of the Halberds, come to think of it. Like, drove three of them away, and then the last one just fire on the, fire on the advanced Geoplant to help finish it off. That's generally what you want to do when you have something that has such a big death explosion. You sacrifice one unit to get the kill, but you still use the rest of it to actually deal damage. Well, Dr. Jim coming in with the Emissaries, not a bad thing to have, actually. With the, em the, am the amount of Emissaries they have, actually, that makes it quite useful. Because all the emissaries they have, they can easily just 
wipe out the Etans, get rid of their opponent's emissaries. The Cyclopses will still be a bit of a problem, but the Glaives in the... Nope, not in a position. Not in a position to deal with it. In fact, the Daggers will be able to take out this entire army, and that is going to be it. The Dante was nowhere nearby to help get rid of the Daggers. The Emissaries wisely scattering, but that eliminates a lot of the force they had of, you know, actually deterring Dying Throne from assaulting. And now they're all dead. And the Dante's the only thing left. Well, that and boatloads of Ravens. Why are the Ravens not attacking? Okay, there they are. Nope. Nope. No, they're just, they're just watching. You got a great view of the slaughter, really. What do you want? Like, Calibers wiping out your base. Let's take a good look at them. Okay, now that now they finally decided to you know, do something about it. I'm being really snarky. I probably shouldn't be the snarky. But yeah, those ravens are just kind of hanging out. They didn't know what to do. Like, man, there's halberds there. Are those ours? Yeah, maybe. Should we get rid of them? Nah. They're having fun. So Dying Friends basically broken Doctor Doom's back at this point. The Dying Friends are not going to advantage. They have the military advantage. They have done a lot of damage into the backline economy. And while Doctor Doom does have enough ravens they could wipe out Dying Friends' entire economy at a stroke, it's not happening. And I can't say I totally blame them. There's a lot of defenses going on, but still. Wiping out your opponent's entire economy with 18 ravens. Not a bad trade. Even if you lose all the Ravens, that's not a bad trade. And if you don't lose all the Ravens, that's a great trade. Especially if you get rid of some of the Quills in the process, too. I mean, it requires a bit of direct action. Like, when you see it, the Quills are there, you have to redirect some of the Ravens for that. But, that yeah, might work. I mean, at this point, Dying Friend has, what? Like, I think 12? No. Okay, they have a bit more than 18. They have 19. They have 19 metal extractors. So one of the ravens wouldn't be able to kill a metal extractor. That's fair. No, never mind. There's 19 ravens. Nope, they're good. They can all wipe it out. I mean, okay, it'll be... They'll be defended by the swifts, and it's a little late for that. It's more of what I meant, like, five minutes ago that could happen. And I'm for pointing out that they attacked the... They didn't waste their time killing the advanced geoplant despite losing the halberds because they were worried about getting bombed. That is a legitimate worry. Normally. That is normally a legitimate worry. <laughs> Although Dr. Doom... Okay, go for an Ambot Factory. We might actually be able to see a, a Lobster Quill... Sorry, Lobster Quill. Blah, a Lobster... A lobster Gin combo. That'd be nice. Might be a little late for that, though. Dime Friend's got a really well-defended base. And, again, there's enough Ravens that those defenses may not even last regardless. So... Let's see how that goes. But, again, not a whole lot of offense being really used. It's kind of surprising. What is their rant air defense? There's Ettons. There's Ettons. That's it. Ettons and Swifts. Those Ravens could have done so much damage by now. I feel like Doctor Doom's just forgotten they exist. Like they have them here. I don't think they have them in control groups. And they're forgetting, oh yeah, I can just send Ravens in and pressure my opponent and deal a bunch of damage and wipe out their economy or wipe out massive chunks of their economy. Because Doctor Doom was doing a really good job early in the game of destroying Dying Throne's economy. That was the thing that was putting them so far ahead. So Doctor Doom has managed to keep this going for 30 minutes, despite the fact that they've been losing a lot of units and Dying Throne, their attrition's been really good and their unit composition's been quite effective. Doctor Doom has just had a massive economic advantage because of early raids. But now we don't see any of the raiding anymore. And because they aren't seeing the rating, now Dying Fern can just build with impunity and doesn't have to worry about anything, because, again, there's no rating. So, at this point, I'm not really sure what to expect. Other than probably... Probably seeing a little bit of extra damage coming in here, but, like, Dying Fern, like, you just... Probably waltz in. I mean, okay, the Ravens are a problem. Things Dying Fern can't waltz in. That's the problem. The Ravens are an issue. I'm forgetting about the Ravens because they're not being used. Because, like, the Ravens are a massive trump card. Doctor Doom, if Dying Fern attacks, can wipe out a Cyclops or two and wipe out a bunch of these forces. The Ettons are going to be a bit of an inconvenience, but Dying Fern's been focusing more on anti-ground forces because, of course, they have. They have the Swifts, which is good, but Doctor Doom does have Swifts of their own, so they still have ways of contesting the air control. So it's not like it's complete wash. It's not like it's just bombers versus fighters. But at the same time, Dying Throne also has pretty good position to attack from. 
except for the fact that they don't have the air control to get rid of all those ravens before they lose a bunch of their forces. And the Dante's still there. And a bunch of phantoms are there. Okay, is Doctor Doom going to be raiding with phantoms? If they successfully raid with phantoms, I'm going to take back everything I said that was slightly snarky about how they were playing. Because holy crap, that would be amazing. But no, it looks like they're going forward with that instead. Don't do that! The Tremor's right there! What are you doing? Like, Tremors! Plural! Okay, well, the Phantom's no longer able to do his job. That well, was nice knowing them. I mean, didn't look half bad dying, but yeah, they're Tremors. This is a no man's land right now. Don't go for it. Like, do what they did in World War One. Fly over it, see what's on the other side, maybe drop some bombs. Maybe shoot down a Zeppelin or two. Don't try to kill it. I guess it's actually kind of appropriate. It's Remembrance Day tomorrow. It's actually the Centennial Remembrance Day tomorrow. But, yeah. I mean, this is definitely an example of why this is bad. You can't deal with all the artillery. If you want to know what it was like to be in World War One, imagine being one of these phantoms. They can't do shit and it's just raining artillery all day, and it's just pounding every day, all day, you go insane. <sighs> Man, how many ravens are there? Still 19. Still not being built. Mostly focused on building owls. I mean, it's good to have information. It's fair information, especially the ravens, or the Swiss wiping them out. Yeah, I'm not sure what the plan is going forward here for either player. Like, is this... Is there a plan to build some kind of big structure? No, defensive structure. Chainsaws, get rid of the Swifts. No artillery, though. I mean, heck, at this point, someone build a disco rave party or something. No, Singularity Reactor. Okay, that's something. Not what I had in mind. I mean, something, though, silly that destroys... Oh, hey, there we go. Shinies, build a trinity. I mean, hey, if you can't win by conventional ground forces, use the nuclear option, I guess. That's nothing to do with World War One, though. And it might have... Maybe ended the war faster? I don't know. Although, to be fair, there is an anti-nuke already. Dark Doom's already prepared for a nuclear strike. I feel like Dr. Doom must be an FFA player or a teams player. I think they are actually a teams player. I think I've seen them play teams. Which is, I'm not sure quite how they do 1v1. And also, I'm not surprised that they're building massive into economy, but not really doing a whole lot with the units, despite the fact they're holding on to them. Got a lot of scallops, too. No lobsters, though. Or gin. Oh. I mean, lobster and gin in the back would have been amazing. Like, scallop guard in the back and teleport and jump all the scallops in. We've seen people try that before, but the lobsters got buffed to make that easier, I think, in this patch. Although, when I'm Sony, I'm fairly certain that's doable regardless. Ah, so many tremors. So much damage. Well, so much. Just not even damage. Just this area is just wiped out. Like, nothing's there. At the same time, Claymores. Oh. Oh. Oh, nice. Okay, Dimefrain trying to wipe out that anti-nuke, because they have the nuke up. They have a missile. Actually, I, think about it. I remember seeing Dimefrain stream last week. They were in an FFA and ended up winning by nuking everybody. There's the anti-nuke anti has been stopped. There's the nuke being fired. We have shinies in 1v1. Dimefrain using his, their FFA tactics on the 1v1. This should be game. Or pretty close to it. I'm pretty sure we're going to see Do Dr. Doom go for a counterattack following this. I don't expect the counterattack to do much. We'll see what happens, though. This is Nuke. This is Nuke. This is Nuke. Gets rid of the anti nuke Gets rid of most of the base. Gets rid of basically everything that Dr. Doom was using to get themselves built up. So yeah, Dodge Doom doesn't have a base anymore. Doesn't really have much, honestly. Still a frontline army, however. And actually, a lot of their economy. But yeah, were... the anti-nuke was the right choice, but the widow to stop it was also the right choice. So, very nice little counter play counterplay there, and I like it. Another minute and 30 for another nuke popping. I don't see the Ravens. I mean, luckily for the Ravens, they weren't near the nuke explosion, so hey, they could still do something if they wanted to, which they clearly don't. But if the if it fancied them, 
It's like, you know what? I'm actually going to do something with my life instead of just hanging out here, having a holiday. You know, maybe. I, I get it. It's a nice island paradise vacation place. It's, sure, I'd have a holiday here. Probably not in the middle of a war zone. But, hey, the Ravens do what they do, I guess. Can't really criticize. Oh, that was the third Widow, apparently. Oh, dying friend. My bad. I missed the first two Widows that were going in there and failing. But I got the one that succeeded. So I think I got the one that was the really important one. But yeah, it's worth noting, that Widow was number three. That was not number one. And Dime Friend managed to get it. Took a while, but they got it, and that worked. And now we should have another nuke ready in 30 seconds. Like, Doctor Doom is really on a clock here. Oh, and the Conscious didn't even... Sheesh. Not the Conscious, the Claymores. Yeah, getting rid of all the Scallops. That's... Nope. Not, I, I figured that would happen, so I didn't even look at it. Like, there's all these scalps there. It's, they'll wipe out everything underwater. I'm sorry, scalps. Sorry, the... Uh, those claymores there. They'll wipe out everything underwater. It's not going to be a problem. Should be another nuke right now. There it is. Yep, another nuke launched. Curious where the target is. But, yeah. Hmm... Is it the same spot? No, it's further further forward. It looks like this area right here where the Cerberus is. And now done. Cerberus is gone. And that pretty much wipes out everything that's stopping Dying Friends Force from attacking. I mean, the Utter Doom, I gotta admire their resilience. I just don't see any way they have of getting back in the game. Like, they are on success of three minute clocks. And they're going for a scorpion. Okay. I mean, I guess stun out the forces. And the ravens are doing something! Unfortunately, they have no air pads to do more things with. But, hey, they're doing something. They finally decided to get off vacation, do their jobs, and then become totally useless because they have no bombs anymore and nowhere to actually rebuild. But, okay, air pads being built up. They're, they're not totally hooped. But yeah, see how much damage the ravens do when they actually do their job? It's amazing! Hopefully they do it again. It'd be great. Maybe build another air pad, though. Sorry, I'm getting really snarky. Sorry, Dr. Doom. I'm I'm being way too snarky. I mean, I'm being snarky more at the Ravens than at you, but eh, I can kind of see if you'd be put off. Dr. Doom's commander, however, should be gone in a second, and I mean, soon after, because it'll probably be nah, another minute until shiny time again. Sheesh. Yeah, Dr. Doom's not doing so hot. Hey, the commander putting up a valiant fight. Yeah. Anyway, so the point is, this game was, like, Dr. Doom had a massive advantage early on. The main issue to me is just Glaive Micro. Like, early on with the raids, set up the Glaives to be a bit further apart so that they don't get hit by daggers, flash. And also don't get hit too much by the death explosions of buildings. And then later in the game, when you have 19 Ravens, even if you're going to have some anti-air, just go for it. If nothing else... Target every single metal extractor, wiping them all out at once. Your opponent has a massive economic disadvantage as a result, and then you can just waltz in. You know, or at least build a larger army. And then once you have the larger army, they can waltz in. But I get that Anisonia is a tough map to be offensive on, because this center trench is almost impossible to get through without being wiped out. I mean, I think it's part of the reason why Dying Friend built the bases here, so that they have something to fall back to. And also some way of attacking the southeast, should they so choose. Not that they ever had to, but if they chose to, they would. And there should be another nuke right now. Dying Friend, not sure when they're going to go for it. Looks like they're just setting up some idea of where their opponents are, knowing where to nuke next. Oh. Oh, it's a funnel web! That's not even a, that's not even a scorpion. Okay. I haven't seen that in a long time. Oh, the graphics have been updated. I like it. I haven't seen the new funnel web. Looks really nice. I didn't realize I got a remodel. Actually, maybe it didn't. Maybe I just have never seen a funnel web uncloaked. I don't even know what it looks like. But that's what's being new. So it's not going to be looking like anything for very long. Oh, no, it is. It survived. It was out of the way. No one took 20 damage. I mean, the rest of the base got completely destroyed. But it's alive. For now. For a very brief period. Actually, it seems to be doing okay. Not a lot's actually damaging, though. But, yeah, it's... Dr. Doom's last real hope here, though. Dying Friend with a massive economic lead. Just streaming daggers and not even worrying about it. I don't think Dying Friend's even microing anymore. They're just walking units in. 
Because they can. They're so far ahead economically, it doesn't even matter. Just drive the units in. That'll basically do it. Yeah, Dynefern really got knocked down at the beginning of the match. Like, they took a lot of economic damage early on, and that... That led to a massive advantage for Doctor Doom. Just a matter of making the most of it. And that in Sony is a tricky map to make the most of it on. But, I think it's gonna be one more nuke. Well, maybe. Minute left, and Doctor Doom seems nowhere near surrendering. The Funnel Web is still alive. I mean, it's having a bit of a hard time staying alive, but it's not dead yet, so hey, there's that. Just stun the thing out. Why not? Take it out. Get more drones, though. I think the Funnel Web is quite nice to look at. It's like a little beetle. Oh, okay, not little. It's actually massive. It's, it's, it towers over trees, but, you know, it's a beetle. Beetles are always kind of cute. I'm sure there's types of beetles that aren't cute, but most of them that I've seen are kind of cute. And, I mean, really, I'm in tangents right now because I'm just waiting for time for it to wipe out this funnel web. Wipe out, take the game. There's the other nuke ready. I mean, it's just a matter of time. A matter of waiting for that to be done because, yeah, it's... Very close. And really, all these blitzes could probably just stun out the funnel web. Problem, of course, being the Reavers, but they're not much of a problem either, so wipe them out and you're good! Just take out the funnel web and that'll be game. If the nuke doesn't take him out sooner. I haven't even gone for it. Dimefer's not even focusing on that at all. Which might be a bad idea, because the anti-nuke's coming up. And there are forces that are stopping the blitz from actually making the anti-nukes die. But I'm not sure where Dodge Doom could be assaulted that would actually give Dime from the game. Like, we're gonna like, nuke here, maybe? Wipes out most of the power structure. I think it's actually all the power structure. Now, it's a decent chunk of it. It's not all of it. But it is by far the most of it. Unless Dime Prince is waiting until two or three nukes get built up and then firing from there. Nope, there it is. There's the nuke. Probably onto the funnel web directly, because that's the key target. If the funnel up goes down, Doctor Doom basically has nothing to work with. It also kills the anti-nuke. Is the funnel up being moved? Is it moved quickly enough? The answer is yes, actually. It's fine. Taking a little bit of damage from the nuke, but again, not dead. Everything else is, including the anti-nuke and the factory. But now the funnel up itself, forced out of position, forced into the blitzes. There's the assault. There's the attack I was looking for. And now with the funnel web down, Doctor Doom is probably going to throw in the towel. I'm guessing... Like, what else is there for Dr. Doom to do? Throw in the towel. There it is. War zone paused. There it is. Sheesh. Dr. Doom has such a massive economic advantage early on, too. I mean, metal used was huge. Value killed was not. Value lost, that was the thing, was efficiency. It was always efficiency. But Dr. Doom had a massive army advantage up until the last quarter of the game, last ten minutes. Prior to that, they were great. They're doing well, they just kept losing armies to daggers, but even then, still had a massive army. So yeah, just say, in future, try to be a bit more careful with the glaze, like micro a bit better, and... That's mainly it. That actually worked out, like, that, those glaze would have done a lot of damage if they had been micro a bit better, if they had been spread out a bit so the daggers couldn't kill them, and then just focus on key targets and kept going. Like, metal extractors, quills, whatever, and then move on. No, wipe out more stuff. Like, 30 glaives for a base that was built up like that? Yeah, like... That's... That shouldn't be a huge issue, but the daggers are really good at wiping out lines of things, because they do line splash. So if stuff's clumped up, daggers will destroy it. And that was what was happening with those glaives. Against any other factory, just about... Except maybe Shieldbot, because the outlaws would have been a massive pain. Against just about any other factory, for the raider units especially... No, any other factory but jump bots, because the pyros. Any other factory... 30 glaives would have wiped out the entire thing. Hovercraft's just weird because the daggers have line splash. That changes the calculus a little bit. And I think Doctor Doom wasn't quite expecting that, because I don't know how much they played Hovercraft. Hovercrafts don't get played very often. But then again, I'm pretty sure Doctor Doom plays FFA in teams, so that's more common there. Hovercraft is. Well, anyway. That was that. I mean... Hmm. You know what? Screw it. Let's do one more. There was a request in chat that came up that was like, you know what? It's a 10-minute 3v3. 
just kick it out quickly. It's on Wanderlust again. So I hope you enjoy Wanderlust because that is what it's going to be. I think Wanderlust is a pretty good map. I kind of like it. So that'll be up in a couple seconds.